Now, usually they used to travel women alone, men alone. And then, at night, they come together. Mary thought Jesus was Joseph, and Joseph thought that Jesus was Mary, and then all of a sudden he's not there. There's a problem. And this problem, instead of Mary and Joseph blaming each other for this problem, they just let go, moved on, and continued the way searching for Jesus. Now they reached another, they reached the temple, and here they found Jesus. And usually when they were searching for their child, the answer would be, sorry mom. But the answer was, you're supposed to know that I have to be in my father's house. There's another problem. According to Mary and Joseph, you're supposed to be with their relatives. According to Jesus, you have to be in the temple. There's different ideas. But nobody is convincing the other who's right and who's wrong. They just let go and moved on because they want to be together as one family, as a united family. Why is that? Because being together is more than just convincing others you're right or wrong. Everybody of us came from a family. Big family, small family. But what will make it united is the love and the care of each other. It doesn't matter to your parents how great you are, how beautiful or handsome you are, how smart you are, they just love you as you are. They don't care how crazy you are, they just love you as you are. They don't ask you to change in order to love them. On another side, when you begin searching for a spouse, sometimes in order to love these people, we put conditions. We need them to change their behaviors, their attitudes, in order to love them. But we have to remember that we were loved without conditions, as we are. So when searching for a spouse, we begin searching for Mr. or Mrs. Wright. We're searching for the right person that fits our lives. And we keep going around searching for Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And we forgot that we're supposed to be the right person. Now going around, you can join clubs to search for Mr. or Mrs. Wright. You can come to them by here like today to find Mr. and Mrs. Wright. But what's important is you being the right person. And when I say you being the right person, we ask these questions today. Are you easy to live with? Are you generous? Are you flexible? Are you willing to put your beloved's needs before your own? Above all, are you mature? Now when I say mature, that means, do you know your talents? Do you know your weaknesses? Do you know your interests? Do you know the things that you hate to do? Do you know the values that you will not compromise in your life? Do you know the preferences that you are willing to bend on? Do you know what you want out of your life? Out of your marriage? Out of this self-knowledge comes the possibility of giving oneself freely to your beloved. Now the ultimate question would be, how do we prepare ourselves for this great marriage, successful marriage, to have a united family? Now, we cannot measure the success of marriage in the first year. We cannot measure it in the second year. We cannot measure it in the fifth year. Or in the five, yes, as we said, in the fifth year. But success is the result of a journey. The journey of a couple that begins before marriage. And there's stages for it. And then it ends in death. Let me share with you the story. I know there's couples that have been, I don't know, maybe three, four years. I knew them. I was shot four months. 